Hi, I'm George. I'm the Engineering Director of 57 Rescue Canada. And here we have part of our uh, Halifax Center Spar. We've erected a shelter here as a temporary uh, workshop uh, so that we can get started here. As you can see, unfortunately, it has been cut into three pieces. So what, what I am doing right now is I've taken off this quadrant here so that I can get in and identify the parts as well as another one over here. Here the uh, part of the fuselage section has been removed again so that I can catalog, inspect and see how much corrosion damage there is so that uh, whether or not we have to make new parts or we can restore these parts. So what kind of an airplane is this? Uh, this is a uh, Hastings slash Halifax main spar. So can you explain that to us? Uh, basically it's uh, it's a plane that's very similar to a Halifax. Well actually it's a post-war production. It is identical to the Halifax structurally except for the fuselage and tailplane. It has a single uh, vertical fin with uh, your typical horizontal stabilizers in the rear whereas the Halifax had two vertical fins across a single stabilizer on the rear. Now the structure is identical. The wings are identical. What they have done was increase the size of the uh, intermediate wing because the wing is actually in five pieces. You have the center which locates your fuselage. Then you have your intermediate wing which bolts onto the end of this and then you have your outboard wing which makes five pieces all in toll. Now, as I said, the structure is identical. The only thing that they did was the intermediate wing was extended for larger fuel tank, uh, more fuel actually, and uh, so that it had a greater range because it was not a bomber, it was sl uh, slash transport as well as passenger. How old is this plane that you're working on right now? I would say probably about 65 to 70 years old. Does that make it more difficult because it's it's that age? Is that make it harder for you to uh, to work on it or is it uh, or is it uh, the same? I hear airplanes that can uh, last for years and years as long as you take care of them an airplane will last for years and years. Yeah. Well as you can see as you're photographing the uh, there is corrosion underneath some of the parts that were bolted to this truss but it's not deep enough that it's going to have to be destroyed. We can actually recover this and use it again. Um, absolutely if the aircraft is properly treated it can last for ever. Even though it's underwater or it's in the ground or? Well as you saw with any 337 which I did this is identical to what I did with any 337. The only difference is this one was outside in a scrapyard and it had the weather, heat, rain, sort of a salt water environment because of where it came from. Whereas uh, NA337 was in a freshwater lake and it was about what 750 feet underwater and also it was laying in mud so it, you know it kind of preserved it. But I'd say it's about the same condition, let's say, as the other one. So what's the first step? Now you, you've got this in the uh, state it's in right now. What, what, what are the things you have to do with this? Okay. This, is, this is the beginning of a series of programs on the rebuild shop mm -hmm. for Halifax 57 Rescue. So what are the different things you're going to have to do in the first stages? Okay, the first stages, what has to be done, as I said, there have been parts removed off the trusses so we can actually get at the pieces. Here are some of the parts down here, which have been removed. Those are uh, pulleys uh, for engine cables, um, different uh, trim tabs and other things, heater controls. So all that had to come off first so that we can have a good look at the truss 
to see where we stand with uh, restoration or having to make new parts. The next part is, I was working on this as you came up. Now, the difference between a British aircraft and American aircraft is just small things like rivets. An American rivet, an, an AN or uh, an you know, MS rivet, all have dimples in the center so that you can align your drill to drill them out. Whereas the British rivets, they don't. So the first tedious part is taking a small drill, and as you can see here, doing pilot holes so you can actually start drilling the rivet heads off, otherwise the drill spins As you can see, these are the pilot holes that we have to drill. Very tiny. Yes, because the next, uh, where is it? Yeah. This is the drill size that will remove the rivet. And like I said, I show, I'll show you an example. That if you start off with this drill, for instance. Well, that one actually works. That one actually worked, but usually what happens is it skips off. And there you go, there's the head removed. Now this piece of skin is now relieved of pressure so that once all the, all the rivets are out, it can be pulled off. So it's, a, it's quite a bit of work then. Yes, it is. It's very labor intensive. So as you can see with this section, this is the belly section. All this I'm removing and along with these uh, parts on the bottom of the wing spar. Now again that's so I can remove these formers again to see how much we can use and how much has to be restored or replaced. After that all this will be taken apart and again, it's very labor intensive because it's a box structure. It has sides on it that all have to be drilled off, cleaned, re-riveted, and restored. Because the next step is, because the wing spar has been cut into three pieces, is that we start with the new spar caps that we have and start working outward. Once we have that established, then we can go to the other two sections, the wing boxes that were cut off this because this is actually the inside of the fuselage. And um, So we're looking at, I'm just going to step back here so we can see it a little bit better. What are we looking at here? Is this the bottom of the plane or the top of the plane? This is the bottom of the airplane. This up here would have been the floor. And that's right at the center of the airplane? Yep, that's in the compartment which either holds freight or passengers. And that spans from this point over here. And it's a curved fuselage piece as you can see by the witness marks. Goes into the belly and then goes back up to there. So what we're talking about is, let's see, approximately, Twenty-two inches of the interior width, or ten feet two inches. Where's so the wings? Where do the wings go on, on onto this part? Is it the wings are forward of this? Or are they behind this? This is the front spar. So the wing box sections, which would have come out of here on both sides, the very leading edge is flush with this and the wing sections go aft. What about the tools? Do they have to be special tools that you're using for this because it's a British airplane? It was, is this a British airplane to start with? Yes, it is. It was manufactured by Handley Page in England. Uh, there are some special tools. They have Whitworth bolts and nuts. Um, 
their riveting system is a little bit different than the uh, North American because what they did was uh, the North American riveting system is the rivet diameter, say it's a 1 8 rivet, the actual diameter is 1 8 of an inch. So therefore when you drill the hole you have to make it larger by about two or three thousandths of an inch with a number drill. Whereas the British system, they drilled exactly 1 8 inch holes and the uh, diameter of the rivet was smaller than the hole so it wasn't truly a 1 8 rivet let's say. How important is it for an aircraft to have the, the rivets at a certain distance? They have to be a certain distance, I guess, to, uh, to keep uh, the whole thing together in regards to uh, holding it together under the stress of flying correct, aircraft. Correct, correct. And this is particularly heavy because the landing gear, the main landing gear, would be out about here on each side. So therefore, it takes a lot of stress also because the uh, amount of wing that is out board of the landing gear because there are other things that come into place such as um, depends how much fuel is still in the upboard wing when it comes in for a landing and say they have a hard landing it flexes those wings like crazy you know you've flown commercially you've seen it yourself how much the wings flex on aircraft and uh, basically yeah it's very important are you excited about this project oh yeah I'm very excited about it Well, that's it for our, our first week, and this will be uh, coming to you every single week. There will be an up, uh, update every week about what is taking place here at the rebuild shop for Halifax 57 Rescue.